Welcome back. Uh, Jared Frazier joins us with Keller Williams. Good to see you, man. Hey, good to see you, too. How you doing? Doing good. Doing great. Yeah, the we, we know what it is now with uh, the, the kid. <gasps> Can I, you announce it? Can you say it? It is a Fraser girl. Oh, a little, a little Fraserette. A Fraserette. Like Fraserette. Yeah. I love it. Congratulations. That's exciting, buddy. So, you know, you've got a lot of experience in real estate, property management, right? I mean, it, you know that a lot of people, when they actually have kids, is a lot of, is oftentimes when they start moving, when, you know, when life starts happening. And mm -hmm. so, you know, when you work with buyers, isn't that a lot of times what you're kind of dealing with is the, the fact that people's life is transitioning? Yeah, the schedule, trying to, trying to match the home purchase with another schedule. Either school is going to be starting at a certain time or they're renting a place and they got to time it right with the lease. And, and that can be very difficult. Uh, trying to predict when the house is going to close 100%, especially in the short sale market we have right now, can be really, really difficult. So trying to get out in front of communication with their, uh, their landlord or property management company that's managing whatever they're renting can be very beneficial. And so it sounds like what you're really saying is there's this, there's this element of, I mean, you're trying to schedule a home purchase around their life. Uh, yeah. And I don't know if people think about it that way. I mean, when you're in the process, you do, right? I mean, you figure, well, you got to have the movers there on Friday so you can move in Saturday, Sunday, maybe take Monday off. I mean, there is this life going on, and it, it kind of pauses for you when you are moving. It does, and, and trying to time it so that you don't make one extra day of payment on your rent before you move in can just add to the stress. It, it's One little thing can slow down a home purchase for a couple days, and if you're supposed to be moving out – you know, now you got to find a place for a few days just to hold out your stuff. So trying to get that time just right can be can be extremely difficult. So I usually suggest to any you know any uh, buyer to start that conversation with the property manager or landlord before you you know you, you put the play the offer in on the place. Uh, sometimes they're they'd work with you. Uh, they might you know you might move out a month early and that could actually be a benefit to them because uh, it might be in a better season for renting for them. You know, sometimes, you know, you'd rather get it rented in the, in the summer before fall starts. So you really don't know until you talk to the property manager, the, the landlord, and just get that conversation going. Sometimes there's ways to entice the deal. Like, you know, hey, can, you know, can we move out a month early and I'll pay 500 bucks more this month, but that's saving you, you know, instead of paying a whole other month's worth of rent uh, for that last remaining month on your lease. Does it seem that there's a lot, you know, there's a lot for buyers to think about? You know, we were just talking earlier about, uh, you know, understanding your goals for maybe purchasing a home, but there's a lot of different things that go into it. And now you couple all the, the scheduling, the, you know, when do you terminate your lease? When do you get the moving vans there? Or what do you do with kids with school? And then you couple that with not maybe being able to buy the house you want because of multiple offers. Are, are buyers getting tired Oh, definitely. The, the multiple offer situations we've been having, just, you know, the pent up demand for housing uh, can get a little overwhelming. I've had several buyers put in fantastic above list price offers, but somebody had something just slightly better. And so that can that can feel very frustrating. You know, you're, you're putting everything into what you, you know, what you're wanting to buy. Uh, you're putting down, you know, good, strong, earnest money, good down payment, uh, trying to meet every contingency that, you know, would, would make for a good sale and you still lose. It's very frustrating. Uh, so, you know, it's buyers are looking to how, you know, a lot of them are doing okay, but they might need to take a few days off. You know, they might need a break. Uh, or when you start looking at that next house, you're still comparing it to the one you didn't get. So it's, it can be very tough and challenging. So, you know, my best advice is, you know, things happen for a reason. And, you know, you try to learn from that last transaction. I try to get as much feedback. Isn't that always the great advice, though, when things don't go? It's like, yeah, things happen yeah, for it's, a it's an e it's an easy one, but, you know, it's <laughs> it, it's what we do. We accept it. You know, there's nothing, <laughs> right. nothing you can really do anyway. So it usually works out. It mm -hmm. usually works out, yeah. Uh, so just being able to move forward, you know, don't give up that hope. And uh, you should still be able to, uh, you know, move forward and, and find the place that's going to work for you. Yeah, the... Uh... The, a lot of the, when you find that place that does work for you, it it certainly does make it seem like things happen for a reason. I've heard so many times that people who are, uh, you know, who are trying to find those houses and they find that one after they lost one. Sometimes that because the, the, the one they end up with ends up being better than what they had hoped in the first place. Oh, totally. Yeah, it can it can totally be just a better house. Uh, it you know things happen for a reason. So 
you, you just don't give up hope. Keep trying. Keep taking, you know, making those good, strong offers, and it's going to work out for you. But I've had buyers who put in, you know, they're on their fifth or sixth offer, and then, it, it, you know, they finally got it. They finally, you know, beat through that demand of housing, and they got accepted. Let's talk a little bit. I know you do a lot with the rentals. Mm -hmm. And I have seen and heard that it's similar in that rental market, too. I mean, it's tough to go find a house to rent. Oh, yeah. The, so the housing demand is kind of, you know, is both worlds in the rental market. So trying to find one to rent, you know, you're still fighting other potential renters. So there are things you can do to, you know, make your situation a little better. You can always offer more rent. I mean, offering $5 more a month can go a long ways. Uh, offering initial you know, hundred bucks, I'll pay actually hundred bucks. You know, you can, you're allowed to do that. You can, you can, you can always pay more than what the rent is if you need a place. So, and other things are negotiable. I mean, you could, uh, deposits, you can, do people tend to forget that. I mean, do people tend to forget they could, I mean, you're essentially making an offer, not really yeah. just cause it, it seems different. You know, you make an offer on a house, but you apply to rent. Right. I mean, that's just the, the terminology. I mean, there, yeah, I mean, you can you can it's it's still an open deal until it closes, until you sign that lease. So uh, I've had people on my college rentals where there's a huge demand offer to pay more rent. They or they increase the deposit. Uh, and, you know, hey, we'll give you a bigger deposit, you know, just uh, to, you know, they're not paying any more money. They're just there's that bigger deposit for the landlord in case you know, these, these must be good renters. Because if they're going to bail or take off or trash the house, they gave me a bigger deposit to deal with. So there are things you can do like that to make the deal better and get that rental. Yeah. And it seems it's uh it is, it's a uh, tough housing market for anybody just trying to find a place to live. Yeah. You know, and I've, I've had clients <laughs> reach out to me who are looking for short term rentals and that's, that's very difficult right now because there isn't a huge demand. You don't have to cater to that short term renter. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of them aren't offering that up, up front, but my advice to them is still go out, look at the place and just, you know, get the ball rolling, introduce yourself, get out there, look at the house and then offer, you know, ask, can you do a short term uh, lease like a six month or a nine month? And you'd be surprised. A lot of people might go for that. You know, they, they, they'd rather do that than have it on the, uh, you know, not getting any rent for another few more weeks. Do you tend to have to pay a premium for those shorter term rents? I, that's a good way to entice it. You know, just mm -hmm. pay, offer to pay a premium for six months. Uh, you can do six, you can do nine. There's no, as long as you don't go over 12 uh, and you can go over 12, it just needs to be notarized. But you can you can cater the deal to whatever you'd like and make that suggestion to get the lease in terms that you want. We're here with Jared Frazier with uh, Keller Williams. Jared, just a couple minutes left before we have to go to break. But um, so when somebody is is deciding whether to buy or rent right now, you know, you talk about the buyer burnout. You even talk about a little bit of renter burnout. I mean, what what is that? What, what advice do you give somebody? I mean, if they're just like, I just need a place to live. Uh, my advice always uh, when, we're, when you're buying is where do you want to be in five, seven years? Do you want to still, do you want to be owning a property? Because that's usually about how long it can take to start feeling the benefits of owning. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the market's going to start ticking back up. We're starting to see that. But uh, if you think you're not going to be living in the same area or you don't think you want to own something for that long, then I would advise against it. Uh, unless you're getting into a, renter a you know, rental property situation or a short-term rental, but that's very unique. That's purely investors. But uh, I try to look at where you think you're going to be, you know, and what you're comfortable with owning. And if that matches a five, seven, 10 year plan, then usually rent owning is definitely beneficial now with the rates are so low. You're going to, it's going to be cheaper than your rent. Give it a few more years. Rents are going to go up. Your mortgage is going to stay flat and you'll be, you'll be saving a lot of money then. Yeah. That's a really good point. Just to, you know, you lock in a 30 year loan versus the fluctuations of rent. At least you know what your payment's going to be for a long time. Yeah. And you're not going to get kicked out and have to move. I mean, you know, you don't know the situation of that rental property. They might, want to sell it and not have renters in it again. So if you don't want to move again for a while, you know, that's the best way to secure that. Absolutely. Jared, thanks so much for joining us. Jared Frazier with Keller Williams. When we come back, Cameron Johnson's coming back to the mic, as is Heather Moore. We're going to chat a little bit more about reputation online, offline, what you need to do. We'll be back. <laughs> 